Hey, welcome to the Rich channel. So you must have seen uh, recently I shot a video episode on um, embedded uh, system software development uh, and the topic of the video is a uh, board support package or BSP. So I discussed uh, the entire uh, big picture of BSP and what it constitutes and uh, stuff like that. And uh, in that uh, episode, I have also mentioned uh, the main ob objective of the BSP is to provide um, the software components uh, for a specific uh, embedded hardware and uh, sometimes uh, you know we can ignore uh, the generic compute platform like this laptops and uh, the servers or uh, pcs or whatever it is because it is so generic you don't need anything uh, you know custom for that you know compute platform but in a way even they include uh, you know the drivers or whatever and uh, you know we can call it as a bsp but it is simplicity so one among the components of a bsp is a uh, tool chain uh, the tool chain is something that I just highlighted in that uh, video episode about BSP because I just forgot to mention that the tool chain should also be a part of BSP, of course. So what constitutes a tool chain? I know that if you are a beginner, uh, you will be confused and you will be wondering about, okay. So tool chain is also should be a part of the BSP and it will be packaged in the vendor who provides that hardware along with the hardware along with the software components they do tend to give that tool chain as well so tool chain is required whenever you have a board which needs some kind of cross compilation uh, since uh, you know intel is so common and if this embedded board runs on arm or it runs on mips or something like that then you need some type of a cross compiler and sometimes you cannot compile on that tiny board okay you cannot put a gcc and you cannot compile that on that tiny board in that case you need something like a tool chain it's just a gcc cross compiler which uh, you know runs on x86 but compiles the code for arm or compiles the code for mips things like that so that's why we call it as a cross compiler and if it is a gcc it runs in that target board let's take for instance uh, raspberry pi it runs uh, raspberry pi can compile uh, c code of course so you can compile the kernel itself i used to do native compile i never used a cross compiler in my situation but in raspberry pi uh, you will have the gcc of course you can write a c code you can compile the kernel code so when you do that it is not cross compiling the gcc runs in raspberry pi uh, which is uh, meant for it's an arm compiled binary which is also producing the ARM, uh, you know, uh, instruction set binary code once you compile your C files or kernel code, okay. So, that way if you see, if you go to the Raspberry Pi, uh, you know, project uh, documentation, uh, kernel compilation Raspberry uh, Pi, kernel compilation Raspberry Pi, something like that you will get this and you can see here one among the search items it shows even my old video this is almost my <laughs> fourth or fifth video uh, after starting this channel so i shot it around 2015 you can see here so it's uh, one among the old videos okay so you can see here uh, you know they have provided all the steps you, you can see it is quite straightforward you are uh, getting all this uh, depths installed dependencies installed for kernel build after that you have this uh, kernel config uh, creation and after that you get uh, you start uh, building that uh, kernel and then uh, you can run it so this is one way of doing it the other way is uh, through cross compiling and this where uh, whatever they provide we call it as a tool chain okay so when you need this thing you can see here they are saying uh, to pull the tools through that github link uh, and uh, you get the tools and then you do all this configuration and get the kernel sources so, and then you start you know building the stuff and once it is built you are getting a kernel which is a kernel binary which runs on raspberry pi but compiled on uh, you know intel x86 uh, via a gcc cross compiler and uh, since it is compatible or a binary meant for raspberry pi it is an arm uh, you know binary whatever it is so this is the role of any you know cross compiler so it makes sense because uh, the moment uh, you can i mean before that i would like to remind that you can see here it has also this 
few little extra steps because you are doing a cross compilation not a native build okay this is the reason if you ask me i know that if you build anything in raspberry pi it may take around four hours or something uh, but if you ask me i generally tend to like uh, if possible do a native build rather than cross compilation of course compilation takes far less time in a x86 server or you know high-end desktop in my case or even a basic laptop compared to a raspberry pi uh, and sometimes you can do on a ssd and you can bump up its you know speed because many fail to understand kernel compilation is both io intensive cpu intensive memory intensive and stuff so you need to have a very perfect system to optimize its uh, build cycles okay so if you are doing some uh, very serious kernel uh, 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 you know development in a day you need to test around 10 to 15 times so then you need to have a very good build system otherwise it is going to take long time in a day at the max you may try some three or four tests and that's about it so which is why you need to have a very good system so it perfectly makes sense uh, to do cross compilation even something like raspberry pi rather than doing a native build because it is going to accelerate the time and you are building on a very powerful system and once the binary is generated anyway you can run it on raspberry pi so that's what is the hint and so which is why you will get some few extra steps ra rather than a native build but uh, i feel that it is far more simpler and straightforward to do a native build and uh, that's about it so it is my just a personal preference and uh, if at all it needs a uh, aggressive development i need to do maybe i may even need to do a cross compilation uh, you know uh, steps okay so which is why when you think about this uh, cross compiler the whatever uh, the software uh, you know modules they provide we call this as the tool chain this is what is called as a tool chain okay so if you are a beginner you will be still confused with bsp is some uh, you know <laughs> you know you will be hearing this term quite often you will also find it in uh, job job descriptions uh, whenever they uh, you know uh, mention about embedded software developers and they post these job postings you may think about something it is crazy and uh, you know this thing it's nothing i mean bsp is it can be drivers it can be custom compile it can be entire uh, you know built binary stuff mostly bsp you can imagine as the binary stuff so that you take the uh, software uh, like this raspbian os for raspberry pi and then you you know uh, you make uh, you know or i mean you put that as a firmware or else you put it in a sd card like in the case of raspberry pi or if it is some embedded board you do in some other way configure your u boot and do all that and then you try to boot that you know board okay either way you know this is mainly constitutes a bsp along with that whatever libraries they have provided see you need to use a net card you need to use some uh, you know components whichever is in that board you need a specific drivers for that okay so or else some kind of layers let it be a case like a single board computer with some gpio pins okay you need to have some support for those gpio pins so those things also constitute bsp extra drivers added extra libraries added so that these gpio pins can be accessible via python php apart from c on c++ so in that way these things constitutes a bsp okay so as you understand a generic laptop will not have any gpio pins so the kernel will not expose any proc uh, you know variables or anything related to gpio pins whereas in the case of raspberry pi it will be done in a different way and now here is where if you compare uh, this uh, raspberry pi or such orange pi banana pi or whatever this ecosystem with an arduino Hey, you know what happens is Arduino is a microcontroller it is not going to run any operating system so you know you don't have any uh, you know OS in the Arduino so the, which is why we write the code in a PC or a laptop and then uh, we push that code uh, via the USB you know uh, cable to the Arduino and I mean we burn the firmware and then uh, Arduino starts working with respect to the new code whatever you have added so this is not the case with Raspberry Pi because uh, Raspberry Pi has an head versus ha Arduino doesn't have any head it's almost like an headless stuff so in the case of Raspberry Pi uh, you know you can uh, expose this uh, GPIO pins via kernel and uh, 
the kernel can provide like a proc interface or it can provide through any means okay so in a generic way it can provide some driver support through proc or any uh, such interfaces so using any c you know user space application c code c plus plus java python php whatever it is you can control this the gpa pins you don't need to necessarily write a hardcore systems <laughs> code in user space uh, you know uh, you know applications you can do with high end programming languages you, you can also do with the scripting languages you can control via web interface you can control with uh, node js angular and stuff like that the reason is the kernel is exposing through proc whatever it is and uh, it's all been covered up so this is what comes into the picture when you think about bsp i do got some emails after i posted that you know bsp video so which is why i'm saying it is very simple bsp should constitute all these things it constitutes the entire software support to use that custom uh, you know hardware and uh, like i showed in the previous episode i had that mips uh, you know card dragino uh, v2 card or the board and uh, you know i need uh, an entire uh, you know usable operating system with all that device driver support and also that i can use that uh, you know hardware which is not the case always explicitly required for generic compute platforms like this x86 machines let it be laptops uh, you know pc servers or even uh, these days we get uh, single board computers which are x86 you know based ones so these are uh, quite generic so you will get some driver support for any other uh, branded uh, nic cards or gpus and stuff like that but on average it is all going to be a generic x86 so most probably you don't need any explicit bsp unless until it is some custom single board computer so which is a x86 but it has some gpio pins and you need some you know support so in that cases they may provide an explicit uh, os image which is trimmed down customized uh, you know and uh, performance tuned for that single board computers but in a generic sense you don't get to see it explicitly although it is there okay so that's what it constitutes a bsp but other than that like i mentioned it constitutes all these things say for instance we take something else like uh, you know uh, nvidia uh, jetson nano you can see here uh, developer kit development kit whatever i search you can go to their uh, site and uh, you can see here this is the board and uh, you can go to their site and uh, you can go to their uh, downloads page documentation and uh, downloads page uh, kit guide we go in either of that page and uh, i even uh, got a hold of its uh, entire resources yeah you can see here so i was doing something on this uh, you know jetson nano and then uh, i was able to get a hold of this and their kernel and few things uh, they have uh, you know put inside this lt4 sources and if you go through their documentation you can see here it contains kernel u boot etc 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 and uh, stuff like that so in my case again i am not doing any uh, uh, cross compile uh, for this jetson nano what i did is i got this uh, sources you can see here uh, this is the jetson nano sources so i got that sources and it has Uh, within itself the kernel source i copied this kernel sources into the jetson nano and i was able to compile uh, the jetson nano so uh, kernel and i was able to boot it without any you know uh, explicit tool chain or any cross compiler so which is why i'm saying so when you think about tool chain you should imagine about all this stuff so that uh, you know you get all the uh, as well the sources apart from binaries and uh, when you talk about bsp you should imagine it's the super set of this tool chain okay so the bsp should contain custom uh, you know uh, os binaries apps kernel the entire ecosystem okay as well as the libraries so that you can write your user space components so which is what constitutes a bsp plus the tool chain everything documentation everything that's what is this bsp in that a subset is this tool chain which is all about developing yourself the entire os image a custom os image than what they have provided because that binary may not have something you want to add something so you need a tool chain so you get that sources plus tool chain and uh, you know these type of resources we can call it as a you know tool chain so which is what so which is why the most important component of any tool chain is this uh, cross compiler 
and uh, you know that's about it so you can see here they have included also those other binaries so this is that root file system and uh, you know stuff like that these are the other uh, you know components as you know uh, jetson nano is targeted for uh, aa applications you can uh, you know put a camera you can uh, uh, connect uh, any uh, raspberry pi compatible cameras or else uh, even a usb camera and then you can use its a features it can do some amount of object detection and uh, stuff like that okay so it can do that uh, it is quite interesting even i can show you one channel called explaining computers and uh, you can have a visit yeah he is the author of that uh, uh, youtube channel i like uh, this uh, channel a lot and uh, recently he even uh, tested uh, the jetson uh, board uh, and uh, let me just show in videos you can see here he did this uh, fantastic uh, episode okay i would highly recommend you to have a look okay so let me skip this ad yep uh, let me just mute it and you can see here he kept keeps this uh, random assorted objects and then uh, the board he uh, added this uh, component so once it is done uh, whatever is placed in front of the camera it can uh, detect to an extent okay so these are all possible with those extra components or libraries whatever we, it comes with this you know jetson nano so you can see here it kind of predicts that it is an elephant and you can move and uh, you know live it is going to sample that image and it is going to predict okay so you can see here the more static it is the more probability will increase because it is uh, you know static and it is not moving it has to do less computation okay uh, and he tests with uh, various assorted objects you can see here now we kept an orange in the focus and then uh, and so on so on and it detects okay so you can see this is a wooden spoon sometimes it thinks it's a wooden ladle and uh, based on that you know position you can see here it thinks it's a drumstick because it looks like a drumstick okay so this is what so it is an interesting thing uh, you know this is what uh, constitutes a bsp the bsp is the super set whatever they provide the software components we can call it as a bsp includes binary sources as well as the tool chain as well as the you know uh, uh, libraries extra libraries whatever so when you call as library again this is something uh, newcomers will be confused whenever you call something as a library most of the times you imagine these are uh, uh, these are uh, can be in user space uh, libraries so once they provide the libraries you can do include of these files in your c code or whatever and then you can uh, write the code which supports a specific functionality and in this case it is not these are not just you know uh, adding extra software features these libraries are mainly given or provided to use some uh, specific hardware capability let it be some led let it be some controller or thermal sensor or something or gpio pins or something to support that they have provided this you know libraries so that's what okay so most of the times whatever libraries you get it from these guys uh, i mean the hardware guys the hardware uh, uh, you know providers or the vendors uh, okay you imagine that this library is meant to do something on the hardware and so they are giving this uh, you know <laughs> you know uh, these added libraries to support that okay so that's what so that is why these things uh, you know constitutes a bsp and uh, the tool chain is a subset of that so that is what so usually you will find with respect to any embedded uh, you know uh, device uh, stuff you know whenever you discuss about embedded uh, system software development you will encounter terms like uh, bsp and toolchain and uh, bsp hope you are clear uh, with my uh, previous uh, video if not you can have a look and then uh, get that big picture and when it comes to toolchain it is a small subset toolchain is also needed because whenever we buy or any company buys this embedded devices they are buying it for uh, making some product out of it see they buy this embedded uh, products and then uh, uh, they can use it in some uh, 
medical instruments they can use it for ultrasound devices they can use it for some x-rays ct scans and stuff they can use it for atm machines and uh, uh, they can use it for point of sale uh, those uh, you know uh, devices <laughs> okay they can even use it uh, uh, to make a router to make a switch to make any you know this uh, kind of you know camera uh, system uh, okay inside the camera these days as we know most of the cameras even these dslrs uh, supports wi-fi and networking in that case they need to have some type of operating system and an entire network stack at least uh, some cut down version of ipv4 stack to support that so they need to have all these things so so when you think about that uh, you will have a hardware vendor and then you will have this uh, you know product specific vendors they get this hardware and they get all that uh, bsp and all the tool chain everything all the software components and then they use it to make their own uh, devices okay so one among that uh, you know building blocks is my uh, true bench as well I uh, hope you must have seen I did this uh, CPU benchmarking uh, stuff. It doesn't uh, focus on uh, multi-core or multi-threading benchmark. It's, it is strictly prohibited to test only the single core or the single thread performance of a processor. Let it be an x86, ARM, MIPS, whatever it is. So I, it is uh, possible to do test with the true bench. So the main objective of TrueBench is to have a platform to enable, you can see here the OEMs, the product manufacturers, CEOs, CTOs to evaluate a specific hardware platform, let it be Intel x86, okay, or ARM, uh, MIPS, whatever that, you know, let it be a processor, server, whatever versus any SOC or single board computers, whatever it is, to evaluate its potential to use in their, you know, manufacturing their commercial products okay, okay so that's what is the main objective of you know a tool like TrueBench. so this is where it comes you will have a vendor and they will have a product manufacturer and in between you need all this uh, supporting components and one of the big part itself is the bsp because uh, you know just by buying the hardware it is of no use it is fine if you are buying something like this calculator because it's an end product it is fine if you are buying like this phone i'm sorry <laughs> this camera it's an end product but you just imagine you want to make this camera but you need some uh, tiny computer where you can customize and do some image processing and stuff and which is where you need all this supply chain okay apart from hardware you need an entire stack and as well as all this software components okay so hope this gives that complete big picture so now uh, you are clear with what an bsp is versus what a tool chain is so if you have anything to discuss be in touch via mail or post your queries in youtube comments thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day bye bye